So, second part of my um, introduction to body as it were. So, first time I competed, um, I kind of covered it in the last video, but I tried to I tried to be as brief as possible. Um, as you can tell, I'm not very good at being concise and sh straight to the point. I uh, take ages to get to the point, annoyingly. Anyway, when it came to my first competitions, so uh, if you've not watched the first video, watch that. If you don't want to watch it, I'll explain. So the first time I competed, I was 16, so 10 years ago now. Um, I competed in the Lock Galley Muscle XS Classic in the junior category, and then I competed in the... Oh, fuck, what was it? The Naval Mr. Scotland at Glen Rottis. So they were about a week between, between each other. And in terms of my preparation, it was a very... It was what a lot of people would call basic and simple and stupid, but it worked. Um, I mean, I, I've gotten leaner than some people I know have gotten, like, when they've used, like, car high cardio, fucking loads of gear, clean, all the stimulants. Um, so it's one of the things I laugh at is because I wouldn't say get in shape easy. It's not easy like it's simple but it's not easy i always struggle once i get to like the four week out mark the three week out mark when you're taking that last bit off but um for the condition i got to for that season my first season 2013 i found it very very easy considering considering what i was doing considering it was the first prep considering i was it was the first time i've ever dieted i mean i'm fucking i was a 16 year old maybe 65 kilo at the time so my diet essentially consisted of um one sachet of oats with a scoop of whey and a uh, banana and then it would either be um rice cakes or potato for the carb source and then it would be like a essentially like a fillet chicken so i'd have roughly around 375 grams of chicken across three meals and then if i was doing rice cakes i'd just split a bag a rice cake, so it'd be like 10 or 12 in a pack, so I'd have four each meal. Um, and if it wasn't that, I'd do like a big baked potato. Um, I'd often use the size of my hand as my scale. <coughs> like nothing, nothing was weighed. It was just very much like, okay, I'll eyeball that, I'll eyeball that, I'll eyeball that. Um, it wasn't, it's not the best way, but it worked. For what I was doing, it, was, it worked. <laughs> very lucky that it did. Um, the one thing that is very bro science is, in my opinion, it is quite old school, is that I changed all the protein supplements I was using to a protein isolate. So I'd been using whatever the, was in the gym at the time, probably Synthesix. This is when Synthesix was all the rage. Big BSN. So I just buy Synthesix isolate. Um, and they all tasted fucking horrible. That did not taste nice. Um, really, really, really like artificially sweet protein. Um, and I was having like around about three protein shakes a day because at post workout I'd have another protein shake and a banana. Then before bed, um, before bed I'd do cottage cheese on four rice cakes. It'd be like however much cottage cheese covered a rice cake prior to bed, and that was to get my casein protein in. And again, like it, that diet taught me the basics of bodybuilding. It taught me that as long as you're consistent, you'll see progress. As long as you don't fuck about with it, you'll see progress. Um, it taught me that even if you don't know the macros, the, the protein, your, your calories, as long as you're being consistent, that's what's key. Like, I could tell everyone with that my, my, my calories and my macros and everything and you could go try that but you're not you're not me so it doesn't matter and it's it's one of the reasons why for so long i i didn't really count or look at my macros in bodybuilding whether it was a diet or not whether it was with a coach or not whether it was doing one, one thing i just be like okay this is what i'm having for breakfast and that's around about the same amount of calories as that type of food um and that's kind of how I learned, and how, that was that was my my approach to nutrition at such an early age. Um, and it's still somewhat 
I still apply with essentially a, a, a diet phase for myself. Like I still obviously use macros for clients, but I try to think of more from a food volume aspect as well, not just calories. Um, like changing bagels to bagel thins, changing rice to brown rice if food gets low. Um, all, all those little tweaks and tricks. I remember that was one of the things they had me do is uh, the guys that ran the gym, they uh, had me change my, my, my white rice to brown rice. And fuck, brown rice is disgusting. And this is when like, I wasn't salting anything, I wasn't putting pepper or any, on anything, everything was plain. Because um, it's hardcore as fuck. But yeah, that was the diet essentially. My training was super high volume, like it got even more high volume than what I'd been doing. And I'd be like almost going like white and passing out in sessions. Um, but I didn't do any cardio. Um, I remember asking, are we going to use, am I going to have to do cardio or am I going to have to do diuretics? Because I've seen other guys doing it. And they were like, you're too small. <laughs> Just like straight up. Sweet. Cool. I am. Um, and I think that's why since then I've chased to be as big a midget as I can be. Because I am five. Five. Um, so that's why I've always been well aware that my limiting factor with bodybuilding is my size, my t the amount of muscle tissue I have on my frame. Um, so yeah, no cardio, no diuretics, nothing fancy. But I was using over-the-counter fat burners, which I can't even fucking tell you. One was called Red Viper. Couldn't tell you what was in it. It would make me like sweat like a motherfucker, get a burning sensation to my esophagus. And I take that in the morning and then at lunch. And the fu the funniest thing about this that, that prep is that I didn't tell anyone. So like I remember sitting down and having like the little leaflet that I think is still in my room, still in my room in people's and sitting down with my mum at dinner around about February, and being like, "Can I do this?" And she was like, "What is it?" I was like, "It's a body wouldn't show." And she was right dead against it. Obviously, she probably knew more about what bodybuilding is than I did at the time. I was very naive to the fact that steroids were involved and the performance and some drug side of it. Um, all I'd really watched was Pump and Iron. So <laughs> in the show in Pump and Iron, the Mr. Universe, they, uh, there's not an audience when they're doing the prejudging. There's only an audience at night. So I didn't really think of that. So I, I wasn't aware that I'd have to shave my body. I wasn't aware that I'd have to tan. I thought I was just going to be oiling up, which is a bit weirder, I guess. Um, and I didn't think there'd be a, uh, an audience there for the prejudging. So when getting ready for the show, the guy that was helping me, they were in the gym, here's your tickets. I think it was like, here are your tickets, or how many tickets do you need for people coming to see you? And I was like, tickets? What? And he's like, well, people are going to be watching you on stage, and it... Like, that wasn't even, like, a, a thought process. Whereas now I find it really funny because I've got a couple of friends that are competing and that's one of the things that makes them nervous is people watching them on stage in their little underwear posing. Um, it wasn't something that went through my mind until, like, the day before. Um, and the same thing with shaving. Like, I wasn't... I'm not hairy. I've never been hairy. So I remember, like, shaving with, like, a fucking Bic razor in the, sh in the shower. Clearly not... Not saying anything, so I could have messaged my girlfriend at the time, <laughs> but spoke to my mother. I think I'm the guys that trained at the gym. How am I, how am I going to go about shaving? And just fucking woke up with so many cuts. I like, had a cut on my ankle, had a cut on my fucking leg. And I remember I was getting tanned up for Dream Tan. They are like, fuck hell, you've cut yourself to fuck you. And they are like, it's fine. And just like rubbed Dream Tan in it, so sort of stinging like shit. Um, oh. But yeah. It's one of my most enjoyable preps that I've done and it's the whole process from start to finish I can remember like it was yesterday um, and that's what started my passion for bodybuilding that's what got me into it and that's what, what I always come back to is as that little kid that was just fucking excited to be there excited to be standing on stage and doing the process of it so every year when, I, when I, I'm either about to start prep I always try to remember and think back why did I do this in the first place? 
And it wasn't to win anything. It wasn't to prove how fucking big I am or how hardcore I am. It was essentially just be like, this is going to be fucking fun. This is odd, but it's fun. And that's it. Um, and that's something not enough people, I think, do when it comes to competing. Is It's a choice. All of it's a choice. So saying and complaining that you're, you're working this and I'm doing this and... I'm having to work this hard on my efforts here. It's like, who gives a fuck? It's bodyboarding, that's it. It's bodyboarding. It's anything that is hard, you're going to have, in life, you're going to have to work hard for. Whether it's a relationship, fucking the dog that's sleeping at my feet. When I first got him, when he was a puppy, it was a whole lot of effort and a whole lot of work getting him trained and, and toilet trained and to just not be a prick. But anything worth having requires that effort. Bodyboarding is just harder because if you have a bad day, it's a bad day. You can't go and have a pizza with your missus. You can't go have a pint. You can't do it. Essentially, you can't do anything to to help. You've just got to either talk it out or just fucking get on with it. And it's why I enjoy bodyboarding most. It's why I think it's one of the hardest sports to do because there's no respite. It's 24-7 until the prep's done. Once you start, you're either doing cardio, you're either prepping or you're hungry. And if you're not doing that, you're likely training. And then you're posing. And then if you're not posing, you're hungry again. Or you got a meal to eat. Or you got food to prep. Or you got steps to do. Or you got to fucking sleep. And then when you try to sleep, you can't sleep. So. It's um, it's always been something I've enjoyed. The whole preparation of bodyboarding. is no prep for it, getting in shape. Every little intricacy. The deeper I get, the closer I get, the harder it gets. Like you can see the end of the tunnel, but it's like all of a sudden you went from like a jogging pace to a walking pace to crawling, and then you've got someone standing on your back. It's it's something I will always enjoy. So yeah.